Can you hear me? Hello. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm just trying to like, uh, connect with the microphones, but it is not working. Okay. Uh, 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 is my voice is audible to you? It's a little hard to hear. It's echo, yeah. Maybe I'll try uh, changing the different uh, microphones tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll start up with uh, uh, from the module. Okay. Just giving the uh, application overview. Uh, this is called a uh, people's of 9.2 version. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned in the uh, demo uh, session, like. Uh, uh, people have when initially when the people have started like uh, they started with the 7.2 that is the the first version and later it has uh, introduced the 8 in 2002 I think okay uh, 2000 2000 2001 they have introduced the 8.1 version and later 8.4 8.5 8.8 8.9 9 9.1 9 and uh, recently in the last March they released the 9.2 version okay. And uh, the major changes in the uh, each level version, like uh, the uh, from the technical side, there is a lot of uh, uh, changes. Uh, but from the application point of view, like uh, they they there is a lot of changes. But according to the new requirements of the uh, the salts or whatever it is, like they they have introduced and they put a lot of controls. And the reporting side, they have uh, they have created uh, more views and uh, which is integrated with the fusions. Okay. So this is the main page called. It is called the main page of the uh, PeopleSoft. Okay, and here it is called like menu. Okay, and you can the menu also menu bar. Uh, you can see like uh, uh, the what are the different modules are available in the PeopleSoft. You can see the applications and as well as the modules. And uh, you can also see to the configuration, the technical side, functional side. Everything is like uh, you can see from this particular menu. Okay. So normally, when you uh, when you work on any uh, any company and any uh, uh, depends upon the company policy and everything, uh, you will get a few access. You may not be able to see entire access, but the demo versions normally in implementations and you will get uh, the demo version uh, where actually you will test your all your scenarios, the configurations and everything. And uh, once it met your requirements, so the, once the whatever the client is provided the requirement, and once that is met with your uh, the uh, output, then based on the the periodic uh, testing and everything, and after the testing everything is completed, and it depends upon the uh, the timelines, the the data will be moved to the production. Okay, so all this will be like uh, uh, everything will be controlled from the security. Okay. Uh, people sub security there are roles and the uh, roles and the permissions uh, will be created and it depends upon the roles and permissions you are able to view the pages so you will able to see those pages and uh, will be everything will be restricted to the security okay and if you see other this is a menu and this is a favorites like uh, uh, if you frequently use uh, uh, some uh, 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 few pages okay on day to day then instead of like you're going searching on this particular uh, menu, you can just add it to the favorites, so that from there you can just like easily access those pages. Instead of searching here, you can just go there and you can just uh, directly click the particular particular page. Then you can uh, you can be able to view this. Uh, if you remember, like in the in the demo, like we have just uh, access a few uh, pages like a uh, uh, regular entry. Okay. And uh, we also like uh, access like ledger, general ledger definitions, currency denominations, and everything. So all these are recently used pages you can see here. And uh, recently searched like uh, add tablets. So wherever you have add tablets, then you can easily access from the tablets page. 
Okay, just like even Internet Explorer later. If you add to your Uh, you can just add other fabrics so that you can easily access those many pages and menus uh, instantly. Okay, and when you, when it comes to this, okay, uh, when it comes to the like, uh, configuration side, you can just segregate. Uh, uh, you can segregate like uh, uh, the main uh, the functional and as well as the uh, uh, from the uh, end user point of view, like user point of view. So as I said earlier, like uh, this is the setup financials where uh, this is the main area where you can do all your configuration. Anything which is the product related, if you want to let like, do access something, so you just you can go to the setup financials. From there, you can you can add. Okay, you can add, you can like delete uh, whatever the modification you want to do. Everything can be done from this particular. Page, okay, and there is one more page called the technical page where like uh, it it actually both it it gives you the technical as well as the functional, okay. Uh, that is called the people tools. The people tool is the main like uh, the technical developer. Uh, majorly like the technical developer will handle these kind of things. And the functional also there are few things which we will handle it. Okay, some other configurations. And the process monitors and everything, how the batch process will runs, any process runs, you can run, you can look it from, uh, you can just uh, check those from the uh, from the particular process monitors and everything. Okay, just a minute, Jonathan. Okay. okay. So uh, there is a call in the setup financial which is called the installation options. So normally this page normally people will use when you are doing the implementation. Okay. When you are doing the implementation, you can see that installation pages level. What are the things we can uh, we can configure or like uh, what are the license we purchase from the Oracle and we can configure those modules. Hi, Gayatri. Hi. Hello.
this is the called uh, installation option page. Okay, uh, just go and click on the products. Okay, so normally when the uh, the consultant whenever they start implementing it, so they should know what are the modules uh, which is required for the particular project. Okay, so which are the modules are required to be uh, to be configured. So in it like normally they will do it. They will select those modules. And they will select those modules and they will, uh, they will uh, select those modules and once they save. So there are uh, kind of four components and the pages which is and which is linked to the each and every module will be automatically open for the configurations. Okay. For example, okay, in the sub financials there is a BU related which I uh, discussed and the common definition related and the product related okay so if i if i can if i enable uh, enable very few modules here then relevant pages and the components for this particular uh, for, uh, for, for the particular view related product related and common definition related pages will be enabled okay because there are a lot of modules interdependent and the configurations in each and every related also interdependent okay so depends upon my configuration selection that my product selected in the installation option level. So those relevant pages and the components will be automatically opened by the uh, database. Okay. So uh, when you normally whenever this uh, implementation comes on, they will buy a license from the Oracle, and when they are buying their license from the Oracle, they will also subscribe for their the products. So, which are how many modules they are going to use, and to that further they will subscribe to the so Oracle. Okay, if something, okay, for example, uh, I am not subscribed to one of the modules, but still I can use it. But when you use it, uh, when you get any kind of technical issues, or uh, which is required the Oracle assistance, once you raise to the Oracle, Oracle will never support, and Oracle will penalize. So, for that, uh, the additional module you are using for this. Okay, so that is why normally, even though the pages, the the, uh, the modules are available, depends upon the license you bought. So those modules only will be enabled in the system. Okay, so this is a page where we can see what are the modules where I can use it. Okay, so once I once I open these uh, uh, the modules, then only I can uh, configure those in the setup financial the view of the product in the Okay. And uh, there are a couple of overall uh, configurations which will be enabled at overall product level. Okay. Okay. So this uh, overall configuration is like it is at a of the company level, okay. the, the organization level where they configure the implementing. Okay. So when I am implementing this, okay, what are the common uh, so, uh, information commonly comments. So, what is this document sequence? This is more of the transactions. Okay. So, depends upon the requirement. It is not necessary to use the document sequencing in each and every uh, company. Okay. So, depends upon the requirement they will use. They will see whether they want to track each and every transactions, and uh, the each and every transactions will be associated with some document number. Okay. So, that will be like used. And whether you want to use uh, alternate account, whether the companies, some very few companies will use the alternate accounts, the so alternate accounts where you can use for the reporting purpose. Okay. So whether I whether if I want to use the alternate accounting in my company, so if I want to use this, uh, uh, you need to just enable that particular alternate account option at the installation option level. So the initial option option level means it is the highest hierarchy in the uh, in the uh, uh, people soft. Okay. So if I if I configure here, that means that entire people soft in the particular organization is enabled. Uh, is this my voice is audible uh, to Gayatri and uh, Jonathan? Yeah, I can hear like 60-70% of it. Yeah, same here. What about that then? Yeah, same here. Okay. 
I'll try to buy a new uh, headset tomorrow. Okay, uh, multi book entries in the software. I think uh, you uh, are aware about the multi uh, uh, multi ledgers and multi books, correct? So whether uh, my company, whether I want to use the multi system, multi subsystems, uh, multi book entries for the subsystems, if you enable, then only you can do it. Okay. And uh, apart from like uh, document tolerance, like uh, whether you want to use the document tolerance options, then you can use this. Uh, legacy, uh, uh, sorry, legal entity. Legal entity is one of the concept. Like, okay, uh, if you want to use in the uh, legal entity concept, for example, multiple entries in the one country can be clubbed and be uh, reported with the one legal entity. Okay. So whether you want to use those kind of country, uh, to kind of reporting purpose, then you will use the legal entity unit concept. Okay. What is this GIS integration? Uh, a global interface staging, okay. Uh, that is like a, a server side, okay. So some of, uh, any any integration which is required from the, the uh, uh, lock, some of the countries will use uh, allies that is like a local interface stages and some of the uh, countries they use like a, a global interface stages. Okay, where the data you need to be like uh, uh, stage your data. Okay, so depends upon the com company only. There is a two technical. You don't need to just you can just uh, uh, use it. Okay, uh, because all the data, whatever the data you use uh, the, in the in database, the data has to be stored somewhere. Okay, each and every data will be stored in the database, and uh, some of the in inbound files and outbound files will be generated. Okay. When you are doing the import and outbound the uh, files and uh, integrating with the multiple system, okay, there is a like server, the servers in the server, local interface stages areas and the local interface user will be, uh, will be, okay. So, for, when you are using that, then only you will uh, use this particular option, okay. Even if you, without uh, enabling this option, also like uh, for the server level, you will do configuration. And the inter-unit method, okay, I will highlight only uh, the uh, way which are is important, okay, because as I said earlier, there are a lot of options will be available in each and every page, okay, but depends upon the company, the kind of nature of the business they do, okay, they will do the configurations, but what are the, uh, the pages, the configurations available is, uh, uh, is uh, considered across the industries and the across the requirement and those are uh, available in the people software. Okay, so whichever is required to the particular organization, only those will be enabled in the company. Okay, so and one more important uh, uh, thing is like inter-unit transactions. Okay, uh, inter when you are doing the inter inter inter, -inter, -inter uh, when you are doing the inter and intra-unit transactions, Okay, so there are two things will be there, okay, a direct and indirect and phase method, okay. What is exactly this does, okay, the inter, when you are doing the, when you are doing the configurations for the internal and intra entity setups, okay, so there are certain way of configuration changes, uh, the differences are there, okay. When you are doing the direct, you can just directly configure and you can create a template and those templates will be unavailable at a GLP level, okay. So some of the uh, indirect method means where you can just select few configuration changes. The paste method, the paste was the one more method where the additional setups have to be done. That is the only the difference except that there is no much difference. Okay. So let's say if I don't check up the enable document setting, then what will happen? Nothing will happen. Then what will happen is you cannot use the document sequence option at a, at a subsystem level or a G level. Okay, can you give an example? Okay. So an example. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me take uh, uh, AP is one of the example. Okay. When you have, when when it enable the uh, allow the document sequencing. Okay. 
installation option where that means it is a highest level of IRP. Okay. So you can enable this document sequencing option at a uh, installation option level. All the BUs, all the BUs, GLBUs, subsystem BUs, everything that so document sequence option will be automatically enabled. That means, that means what will happen whenever you do your uh, GLBU configuration or subsystem configurations, you have to define uh, your uh, document sequencing number. Okay, if, I, if you don't do it, so the configuration will not be completed. Your system will not allow you to complete your setups. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I if I not selected, then what will happen? So you don't have to track all your transactions, sir. Inbound, outbound, you like subsystem level, GL level. You don't want to track. Okay, uh, with the sequence number, the document sequencing number. If you don't enable that option, so that our configuration itself will not be enabled at a GLBU level or subsystem BU level. So it is not required you to let you select the particular option. And you will not be able to see the document sequence option in a page in your uh, subsystem level. Is it okay? Yep. So Second thing, these are the products. Okay, I just uh, when we are going into the the module specific, I will cover one by one. But I will as a ISI level, I will, I will show you. Okay. If I go to the billing options, okay, so there are a lot of importance uh, on the uh, installation option level. Okay, so here uh, the in your uh, auto numbering parameters. Okay, so this I will cover when in detail when I am covering the uh, building module. Okay, so here it will uh, it will it will define your defining your at what level your auto numbering parameters you want to define. Okay, whether you want to control your auto numbering. Auto numbering is nothing but your invoice number. Okay, so but whenever you do a building uh, from the uh, generate invoice from the building module. Okay. So there is an invoice number has to be generated in the system. Okay. So at what level you want to generate your invoice number? Okay. So in the see, uh, initial option level you will define at what level I can define my invoice number. Okay. From the people's point of view, the the reason why the given option because you can you can define your your number invoice number at a different levels. Okay, the meaning of different levels means at a BU level I can configure it. Okay, at a build type I can configure it. On build source level I can configure it. Okay, so where which what level you want to define you need to define here. For example, if I use a business unit level, that means at a business unit level this invoice number ID option will be enabled. Okay, if I say at a build type level, okay, here business unit level, I am I'm not able to see this invoice ID number, invoice ID format in the number. So where I can see, I can see, uh, I can see the invoice number format only at a build type level. So recommended is build type, right? No, that is uh, depends upon your requirement, company company requirement. Okay. So some of the companies they uh, I will I'll share my experience. Okay. In one of the organization where we have uh, uh, we have uh, we have uh, configured the invoice numbering at each and every business unit level. Okay. For example, you have ten business units. Okay. So each each business unit have their own unique number format. Okay. So one of the organization what we have configured, they said uh, even the business unit level also they want to configure their at a build type or the build source level. 
bill type or bill sourcing source means like whether uh, when you are generating the invoices from the online, then have to configure uh, there is a separate a uh, unique uh, numbering format actually generated for it. When I am generating the invoices from the asset management, I have to get okay. So asset management like I have to look at AM0001, 0 to 0. That means by looking the invoice number, I can come to know this invoice is generated from the AM module. Some of the like the contracts, some of the invoices will be generated from the contract. Okay. So the numbering format. So when we are configuring, we will enable by the source level. That means whenever any invoice is coming from the contracts, so whenever any is coming from the contracts, the the invoice format will be going take from the <coughs> source configuration. At the source level, what format? Invoice format I have configured, so those invoice number format will be generated and will be used. Okay, in one of one of my experience where they have a different concept called like a business unit, uh, uh, manager can be level entity and a business unit. Okay, so uh, multiple business unit will be linked to one level entity and multiple level entity will be linked to one manager. So, so they said they want to track uh, uh, some entities they want to track their invoice number by using the manual entry. For example, US001 is a zero one is the manual entry. Okay, so all in all invoices which is generated under the legal entity and the subsystem like a sub B use in the same legal entity, everything the system is generated only US US01 and followed by the number. In the same entity only in other other uh, uh, other manual entry they said they want to <coughs> Track the invoices with the legal entity. Okay, so you, whenever they, you do it, the uh, generating invoice from the legal entity, so it is coming as USA01, USA0002, USA003. So because the legal entity starts from the USA001, 01, 02, 02, 02, 02. So, so we will combination, we will create a combination of the BUS business unit number plus followed by the Eight, 8 characters or 10 characters of the country, 8 kind of number, number, uh, uh, um, number format. <coughs> so those kind of uh, configuration we will do it. If I, if, I, if I enable this particular source level, that means when I go into the source level, I can see there only I can define my invoice number format. 